So a lot of people have asked me, what is Sue Ishida going to do next? You know, is he going to do another work? Is he going to take a massive break? Is he ever going to come back? You know, that is the big question that a lot of people have. And honestly, I don't have an answer for it. I don't think anyone does. Not even Sue Ishida himself. What the fuck? For this video to help you come to your own conclusion on what you feel like, you know, Ishida may or may not do, I definitely recommend go watching a video I done about the letter that he dropped about Tokyo Ghoul. Uh, it's definitely very personal about his lifestyle and how he felt about his work and there is a lot of emotion in it it gives you a really good insight on who he is as a person i guess the overall ending of tokyo ghoul as well and how he felt that letter definitely gave us some good clarification that he was very burnt out for tokyo ghoul he was burnt out as a creator he was burnt out as an author as an artist as basically everything you know working for seven years eight years straight uh you know week after week it is such a tedious thing to do that it's without a doubt that you know he wants to take a break he wants to relax and not have to meet a deadline every single week while producing such you know a high quality story with high quality artwork it's incredibly difficult I fully understand you know, how he felt about Tokyo Ghoul and how he felt about the industry and being creative and how he felt lost, how he felt like he was pushing himself to do a series that he necessarily was burnt out on and that, you know, he lost the passion for it. And then even in the final months, the only, I guess, solace, I guess you could say that he found in writing Tokyo Ghoul, which he prominently said that he enjoyed was the fact that, you know, he gave himself a six month time limit. And honestly, I think after reading that letter and what he had to say about you know the work and the journey and Tokyo Ghoul I feel like that six months made him so happy because he knew by the end of it that he was done that he didn't have to produce anything anymore you can definitely see the decrease in quality and how it affects people mentally and physically and emotionally and you can see that in Tokyo Ghoul Re you can see where the story starts to slowly lose traction and just a lot of big steps taken and just not enough impact and not enough meaning overall the six months that he's talking about is the six months of the finale of the story that was completely rushed i'm sure he didn't want his series to go down the way it did sure the ending is probably not what he envisioned nor how it got there but i do think he took solace in the idea that he gave himself six months you know publishers allowed it and he was happy in the fact that he was ending his series and that he would be complete with it with that being said where do we go from here you know a, a weekly series of, of such a caliber like tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Re is such a difficult thing to produce and there is a very very big difference between writing a seinen weekly series compared to a shonen weekly series right Let, let's just look at a couple of different comparisons here right Tokyo Ghoul to One Piece if you've read both of these series you would know straight off the bat the reasons why they're put in the shonen and seinen category you would know the complexity of both series and the emotion and atmosphere of both series as well as its artwork specifically as well um, in a lot of different uh, I guess points that are checked off in terms of artwork it's not just the artwork it's like atmospheric artwork it's emotional artwork etc etc two series that are completely different to one another you know Oda's been doing one piece for how many odd years now 20 plus 900 plus chapters it's wrong to compare Oda who's been doing it for 20 years to Sue Ishida who's burnt out and done it for seven right you can't compare authors like that their series are completely different Tokyo Ghoul is extremely extremely complex and One Piece has incredible world building. The only thing they share in common is the fact that they're both produced on a weekly basis. With that in your head, how do you have a series that is so filled with atmosphere and storytelling and complexity, right, mixed with such crazy artwork, such incredible emotional artwork? How do you reckon that they can produce that on a weekly basis to compete with a series that doesn't have that? To compete with a series, for example, like Black Clover that doesn't have story complexity? that doesn't have the you know crazy atmospheric artwork but both series are producing content on the exact same basis on a weekly basis this is where weekly young jump which is the same in publishing which is for you know 18 plus basically a lot of your darker stories this is where the authors for sane and series get completely fucked because their standards are manipulated and warped to fit more so the shonen category and you know what i'm going to be completely real with you writing my hero academia or black clover or one piece or whatever dr stone promised neverland is way more easier than writing Tokyo Ghoul on a weekly basis. And I know
know a lot of people for fact will debate with me about that, right? One Piece has got crazy world building and, you know, My Hero Academia has got a lot of characters, etc, etc. None of those series hold any weight towards Tokyo Ghoul or even Kingdom, right? Or even Berserk, which is done on a monthly basis. None of those series hold any weight to the Seinen series. And yet they're produced on the exact same weekly basis. They have the exact same workload. And you know what's funny? Seinen series don't write like the weekly Shonen series. You know, Shonen series favor the weekly writing. They can manipulate and morph their story for the weekly storytelling so they can hype people up every single week. And it's so simplistic. It's so easy in nature for Shonen series because their series are so simplistic. Their series are so easy to warp and manipulate to suit the reader's needs and to hype them up and build that expectation. You don't have that with Tokyo Ghoul. And you know what? When we did get that for Tokyo Ghoul, look how completely rushed it was. When Ishida started to write on a weekly basis, which made it feel like a shonen series, it lost all of its flavor. It lost all of its emotion and impact and storytelling. Its atmosphere was gone. Its heart and soul was gone. That is not 100% Ishida's fault. That is the weekly workload that is exactly the same as shonen series. So after that massive ramble, where does that leave us? What does Sue Ishida do then? To be completely honest, I feel like Sue Ishida's work would fit perfectly in a monthly format. I think that his work is on the exact same level as Oshimi Shuzo, Ino Asano, or even Naoki Orosawa, some of the, in my opinion, top of the line manga creators on this planet. All three of them, right? I'm not talking about Ichiro Oda, I'm not talking about Masashi Kishimoto or anything like that. I'm talking about Monster, I'm talking about Oyasumi Pun Pun, and I'm talking about Flowers of Evil, as well as Berserk. Let's, let's chuck Berserk in there as well. Some of the most incredible series that you could ever read, and I would recommend absolutely everyone watching this video to go at, at least check them out. They are absolutely incredible. They are the pinnacle of storytelling and emotion and atmosphere and writing, and I damn well would put Sui Ishida up on that pedestal because I believe that he can write a series like that on a monthly basis. I would believe that that gives him an opportune window to be a lot freer with how he chooses his storytelling. A monthly series is a lot easier to handle than a weekly series, and a successful monthly series has a lot of freedom in terms of publishing, in terms of being successful. If you're kind of scratching your head, like, who the fuck is Naoki Urasawa? Who is Ino Asano? Who is Osumi Shuzo? There's a reason why you don't really hear about them, because they're not in the weekly spotlight. All of them have their respectable masterpiece, if you will, their story that has brought them to the forefront of being, quote-unquote, the best of the best in terms of authors, yet none of them are weekly. Ishida could be in that exact same boat, and I feel like it would fit his writing style perfectly. I feel like it would fit his symbolic, atmospheric nature and how in-depth he goes with storytelling and how complex he gets. I would love to see Ishida do a story with no fantasy in it and just focus solely on realism. <laughs> focus on mentality, focus on, you know, tragic and dark events, because let's be honest, right, Sue Ishida's strong point is taking such a dark topic, a dark situation or event or emotion, and completely expanding that and turning it into something beautiful. It's without a doubt in my mind that if Ishida were to do that with a series with no fantasy, no monsters, no ghouls, no powers, nothing, a monthly realistic series focusing on extremely dark things, focusing on mentality and the character's emotion and atmosphere, he would write an absolute masterpiece. And he would do, in my opinion, such an incredible job with it. Seeing how he handled the Tokyo Ghoul franchise, I have full faith in him doing a monthly series surrounding realism. And for me, personally, that's where I would love to see him go. If he is to come back and create any sort of new series, I would love to see him move away from the weekly genre. Move away from the weekly workload and move more so to monthly, if that is better suited for him. I want to see Ishida's talents flourish and evolve and basically him not being restricted, um, whether it be by time or workload or even by the publishers, to create something that he is personally happy with, that he can enjoy and fill to the brim with that Ishida passion. I feel like the weekly workload really does skewer a lot of it. You know, something he may put in 100% passion into, once it goes through the weekly format, you're only left with like 50% of it and it sucks. It really 
really does. So I would love to see him do a monthly series with no fantasy. You don't get me wrong, I'd love to see a fantasy series, you know, another one. But I also would love to see how he handles realistic events and emotion and atmosphere with no fantasy kind of construing around. And that's basically it. So what do you guys think Sue Ishida's next work will be? Do you think he's even going to do a new series? Do you think he's done and dusted? Or do you think he should potentially pursue a monthly series? You know, away from the weekly form, away from the torturous weekly format so he can flourish as an author. Let me know. But with that being said, I'm actually going to end the video off here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll catch you guys in the next video.